Hello my gorgeous makeup loving friends, how's it going? Welcome back to my channel or if you're new here, hi. My name is Teresa, I love all things makeup, beauty and skincare. So every weekend I like to hang out with you guys to talk about the newest releases that we've collectively found rather interesting. However, I will say, quick caveat, next week there's no releases and rants. I know, hold back your tears. One of my best friends is getting married, so obviously I am away at that, but don't worry, we'll be back the next week. However, you guys did tag me in content this week, so I want to say a massive thank you to everyone who did tag me. You know the drill, there'd be no episode without you guys, so you are the true heroes, but also a massive thank you to my YouTube community members. You know the drill, I am gonna say all these fabulous things about you. Nothing negative to say, 10 out of 10. Would have you yet again. But friends, we do have quite a few things to discuss and you know the drill, I'm going to tell you to remind you to hydrate yourself. Have a beverage of choice. I'm not gonna judge. It's five o'clock summer, take whatever you want, but we will get right into it. It seems that Wet n Wild have managed to get the IP for Nightmare Before Christmas because we're seeing a launch coming from them quite soon. This is quite strange in the sense that some of these are actually already available at CVS. And by the way, so hard for me to get the images on this because essentially if you're not in the US, you can't get onto the CVS website. So I had to get like a VPN. I know the things I do for you guys. The, the products themselves range somewhere between $7.99 and $18.99 depending upon where you're looking, but these will be available at Ulta, etc. They are not available on Wet n Wild yet, which I find quite interesting, but there's a lot of stuff in here. There's two different types of liquid eyeliners. There's Oogie Boogie and Zero to Hero. There's a mascara in Sally. There's an eye and face palette. Now they have said it's an eye and face palette because obviously there's some pigments in there that are not safe for eyes. So they're trying to do a little run around there. There's a primer. There's also a lip and cheek color in the shades Barrel of Scares and On Lockdown. There's two different shades of lip oil, Too Faced and Truth or Scare. There's contour stick, an illuminator, and a blush light. Now, those are all the things that I've seen on CVS. However, based upon some pictures from Trend Mood, there's also some other things, including essentially stick shadows, this primer powder, finishing powder. It's very, very strange, and a makeup bag. But I'm gonna talk first about the stuff that I saw on CVS. We're gonna talk about the eyeshadow palette. So that yellow shade in there, that seems to be a pressed glitter. Once you zoom in, you're like, oh, holy shit. I'm not wildly surprised, because I've said this a million times before, kind of getting a shade of yellow as an eyeshadow is very, very difficult. So they've kind of gone for the easy route out here, which again is part of, I'd say, why they've said that this is an eye and a face palette. Over on CVS, this is marked down as $9.99, which actually isn't too bad. Wet n Wild is okay in terms of their formula when it comes to their eyeshadows. And they don't have a lot of mattes in there. It seems to be quite shimmer heavy. That's simply because it's cheaper to make those. Making a good matte can be kind of tricky. The shades kind of make sense. They link in with Sally's dress that whole thing. They're grand. They're nothing that I'd be like, oh my God, I need to have this in my life. Like I, I could be fine without it. There's other face things though. Oh my God, can I talk about the illuminator? Hells yes, I can because this is my channel. Oh my God, it seems like there's a duochrome thing in there. That looks really, really interesting. Now I've checked everywhere. I can't find swatches. I'm sorry, it is what it is, but I'd love to see this on a couple of different skin tones. Then there's a contour stick, which, okay, I'm a bit confused by because there's like a white bit and I'm like, who's contouring? With, with white. Unless you're going for a real Jack Skellington and you, you actually have white skin, it seems a bit confusing. And then the contoury shade, I don't know, just based on that, it doesn't look quite kind of gray enough. It looks more bronzy in my opinion. I could be completely wrong. But yeah, the white is like meant to be a highlight and I'm confused. My major critique here is the lack of inclusivity. If you're gonna come out with a collection that is beloved by a massive population, don't make it so that it's only available for use by a couple of people. Like that just seems a little bit lazy. I, I don't like it. There's also the blush light and I mean the shades make sense in the, in the sense that they're linked with Sally. However, it does drive me a little bit nuts that there's no kind of separation between each of those shades. And I know that's not a big deal. It's very much in the realm of first world problems, but it does still somewhat annoy me. And it does look like they're quite like shimmery, obviously when they're blush lights. For me, I'm old. I know, hard to believe. And I'll say that every single week until somebody goes, yes, Teresa, I can't believe you're 34. Thank you. That's all I'm looking for, a little bit of validation. For me, 
I just feel like that sort of a formula doesn't work right on me because it just shows up a whole bunch of texture that I didn't even know was there. So probably not. But I mean, for a lot of people, this is going to be great for them as like a collector's piece. The eyeliners then, there's obviously one which is a white, which is by the way, when you're looking at it, why there's no swatch because you can't really swatch white on white because that would look really, really weird. Packaging looks really, really cute. The Oogie Boogie one is like a green one, but it looks like there's glitter in it. And I gotta say, I'm kind of interested in that, but I wonder how like opaque it is. Is it gonna be like super transparent? Would I have to be there like building and building and building? In which case, no thank you. The primer and the mascara, I mean, they're fine. Like they don't really look like anything to write home about. The packaging is kind of cute. I could see a lot of people getting decent use out of those. The lip and cheek tints, I mean, yeah, they're not bad. I do feel like actually out of the collection, this is probably the stuff that would work for a greater variety of the population than the rest of them. Like at least with that deep plummy shade, I feel like that would work a little bit better on a deeper skin tone than a lot of the other things. So there's something there at least. The lip oils, I mean, they're fine. You know, the packaging again, quite cute. I'm personally not wildly into lip oils. I don't know why we stopped calling them lip glosses and then we're like, ha ha ha, lip oils. Because they're essentially the same sort of formula, but like they're grand. Again, didn't find any sort of pictures of them on the lips, which is a little bit annoying. But I'll show you the stuff that was also over on Trend Mood, which is that primer finishing powder, which I'm very confused by. The bag is quite cute. And then there's also those two piece multi-use sticks, which I'm assuming are like eyeshadows and possibly, I don't know, highlighty blush things. Ooh, they look kind of ashy in terms of their shades, but they're all right. I know a few people have kind of seen these about, and I know somebody did say over on my YouTube that they had actually picked up the mascara. And I think the mascara is like $7.99. So actually, that's not a bad one to pick up at all. We've seen a lot of Nightmare Before Christmas collapse. Let's be 100% real like obviously probably one of the best known of recent years would have been melt like melt always take ips like this and they do okay i feel like their one of this wasn't fantastic there was some great stuff and then there was some like huh, not not so sure about this but then obviously we had revolution beauty <laughs> Makeup Revolution, Revolution IRL, whoever knows, whatever it is that they're called. They also did this at some point. And I remember that being a little bit of a disaster, like the quality wasn't great. Are we that surprised? Look, Nightmare Before Christmas is very, very loved, particularly by people of my generation, because we kind of grew up on it. It's a whole thing. And I think particularly for those who are more like alt, this is like the coming of age film of like, haha, I'm kooky, I'm quirky. It's a whole thing. And the fact that this is more affordable, I think this is great. I'm quite happy with it. They've also come up with this at a pretty good time. Like it's coming up to Halloween. People will want stuff like this, so it's not bad. But I can also see some people putting this aside for like stocking fillers. I know, I hate to be saying that. I hate to be saying that, but that's the reality of it all. These are okay. My major issue, and I'll say it, time and time and time and time and time again is the lack of inclusivity. Even when it comes down to the primer powder, setting powder, um, the uh, blushes seem to be fairly inclusive, but things like the contour and the highlighter, etc., that needs to be a little bit more inclusive. Come out with a, a couple of extra shades. Like, you know, you can have them in different, different depths. I don't know why they didn't do that. That just seems a little bit strange to me. Then we have Sigma who have revealed their Little Mermaid collection and this is quite a strange one because they launched it on JCPenney early. JCPenney have since taken it down but it's over on, I think it's called the Lunchbox. So I got a couple of the pictures from there. But the one thing that they didn't have was the blush. Anyways, this is coming to Sigma Beauty soon but no exact dates have been confirmed and I haven't put down the prices because prices on Lunchbox might be different and blah blah blah. It was a whole thing. This includes an eyeshadow palette and it's £14 it includes mattes, shimmers, duochromes, and a multi-chrome. What's quite interesting here is that they didn't include a brush, which is very unusual for Sigma. Obviously, they're very, very well known for the brushes, their tools, etc. And normally when you're getting an eyeshadow palette with them, you're also getting a brush. And some people love that. Some people are like, oh, I don't really need it. You know, but I think that yeah, why some people would be a bit miffed. Now I have a million brushes, so I wouldn't necessarily need it, but there you go. They also have the Little Mermaid lip set. So that comes with one lip cream and two lip oils. They have a Little Mermaid highlighter 
glitter and it has that cute little shell shaped compact and there's also a blush and of course a brush set so maybe if we talk about the eyeshadow palette first like I said it doesn't seem to be coming with a brush so I'm assuming they're trying to cut down on the cost a lot of people who would go for their stuff would probably have quite a few brushes already and they probably don't need the add-on brush however that that's a certain you know section of the population I feel like a lot of us if we get the extra brush we're like ah no harm and we pop it into a brush holder or whatever but quite a few people do like to take these on the go and they are like a one brush and done kind of person which fantastic love that for you you live your life so I feel like there are definitely like a couple of people out there who are a bit sad that they're not also getting the brush however I like this color story I think this is very pretty I can see how it's linked to both the original Little Mermaid and also the newer Little Mermaid I feel like the timing of this is very very off though like the Little Mermaid came out a while ago and now they're doing this so I don't know what happened maybe maybe this is a case of like it wasn't perfected and they didn't want to release it like when it wasn't perfect in which case if that's what's going on well done I'm for that I prefer you to release something later and make sure it's of good quality than just be like meh let's release it at this time to bag the box which you know well done the shades are quite nice I do feel like there's a, a decent level of depth there now I have no swatches but they look nicer I mean there's a black in there there's some purples this is one of the more kind of colorful Sigma palettes I have maybe two Sigma eyeshadow palettes and I do quite like them I think they're very very nice quality so I'm kind of here for it and in terms of the lip kit there's one lip cream and the rest are lip oils the lip cream is called dingle hopper and it's that light neutral creamy sheen and then the two lip oils are coral and then one is like a sheer sparkly one they're nice like they're very very safe shades this reminds me of Sebastian you know the various shades of Sebastian so I kind of like it I think it's it's quite nice the kind of gold tops etc on them makes it look really luxe I think it's quite pretty of course the the bag and brush set I actually think are, are pretty good that staple for Sigma you seem to get three brushes in that along with the bag you get your F44 powder sculpt an E27 detail and an E30 pencil are these like the most you know amazing brushes ever like in terms of their brush shapes no but they're pretty standard like you'll get use out of them so I think they kind of went for something that would make sense for them and the handles on them super super cute I'm gonna say this again <laughs> this is just the damn theme of today the highlighter and the blush they look really really beautiful I love the compact my major issue here particularly in terms of the highlighter is I want to see what it looks like I'm reserving judgment because it could be one that has no base on it like I got the Glisten Cosmetics Tubby Custard highlighter and there's no base on that and it just is like fabulous sparkles so anyone can wear it and if this is the same then it's going to be great it's going to be super inclusive but if it isn't I kind of don't get that particularly when the little mermaid is a character that has been played by a diversity of skin tones and I think that's something that would need to be really captured in any sort of face products. The blush itself that looks quite pretty again I think maybe they could have gone for like an extra one there to kind of suit people who have a deeper skin tone but the actual packaging I mean it looks super super cute I, I think it's very very pretty. No exact date as to when that's coming out but as I said the lunchbox kind of site seems to have it so I'll have all the links down below if you are interested in those. I feel like this is quite a nice collection and again with The Little Mermaid I don't even know how many people have done this at this point. Definitely you, you can bet your bottom dollar that Revolution have done it at some point so it goes without saying this is better than Revolution. Um, the eyeshadow palette I think is really really pretty. They seem to be doing a lot of IPs with Disney lately. Their most recent one was Beauty and the Beast. They had also done an Alice in Wonderland. So I actually quite like that Disney is working with them because I feel like they're really, really good quality and we could get some really nice collector's pieces out of that. Yeah, I mean, I quite like it. This will probably come to Beauty Bay at some point, so... I don't know, do I need it? Absolutely not, but I think it's quite nice. Then we have Makeup by Mario and he's come out with a whole bunch of new things for his Surreal Skin line. And there includes a soft blur setting powder. It comes in seven shades. They are, by the way, talc free. I checked that up. They are $38 and they come in seven shades. There's the Surreal Skin Soft Setting Spray for $34 and there's the Master Pro Puff for $18. Let's talk first about that soft blur setting powder. I thought it was really interesting that when he was advertising this, he wasn't saying that it was talc free. We've seen 
there's been like a big push over the last year, year and a half of people kind of going, oh, our powder is talc free. But it feels, to be fair, Makeup by Mario has been doing this for quite some time and even things like its eyeshadows have been talc free before a lot of other brands necessarily went that way. And I thought it was really interesting that he didn't lead with that. He's kind of almost saying like, this should be a given. Our powders shouldn't have talc in them. So why would I say this? And I kind of like that. I kind of like that he's kind of going, well, no, this is just the standard now. And I appreciate that. So there's seven shades. It does look very, very nice. It's meant to be non-comedogenic and non-cakey. It's meant to last for like up to 12 hours, which I gotta say, I'm quite interested in. It looked very, very finely milled. And apparently you can like brighten the skin tone and you can build it in soft layers. It's gonna help you to control shine. Obviously a lot of people who like these kind of loose powders, they're fantastic if you have like oilier skin, etc. But I mean, most people have oil to some degree. You're gonna have like T-zones, etc. that need it a little bit more. I tend to go very light on setting powder just because my skin is quite dry. I know, terrible. Like my sense of humor. But I think this is pretty good. And I mean, the fact that he's come out with seven shades, the deepest shade, I mean, it does look like it, it'll work across a couple of skin tones. And I suspect that he used it on Galoria recently. And like he said, this is meant to be brightening as well. So I think it looks pretty good. I'm also gonna say I'm quite interested in that setting spray. $34, so it is quite expensive, but it's alcohol and fragrance free. And it, it's meant to have an ultra fine mist and it's gonna give you all day hydration. As I said before, I'm a dry skinned bee. So the idea of adding in hydration to me is just like, ah, oh, speaking my language here, I quite like it. I, I think this is smart. And I personally feel that what Makeup by Mario does very well in terms of his aesthetic of makeup is skin. And that's one of the hardest things to do very, very well, in my opinion. I think it's relatively easy to put together like a nice looking eye look, but the skin can fall apart. <laughs> because right. it's like unless you have perfect skin it can look a little bit weird and I feel like he's really made a name for himself of having beautiful glowy goddess like skin on the people that he works with so it makes sense that he's going forward with more kind of complexion based products so I think this is very very smart he's also brought out the master pro puff for $18 I quite like that there's a, a ribbon on it and you can flip it so you can use both sides this you, again, you can tell this is coming from somebody who's a makeup artist and he's thinking on his feet and trying to get the most use out of his products and have this be very, very versatile. $18 is not wildly expensive for a powder puff, um, but it's definitely on the pricier side as well. But I suspect it's going to be really, really good quality. I quite like these. I will say, do I need them? No, absolutely not. <laughs> I know I don't, but I think it's it's definitely like an interesting idea and I feel like he'll have executed it really, really well. Then we have yet another Halloween launch. This is from Profusion and it's their collaboration with Peanuts. I said it before, I'm Irish, so I don't necessarily always get or understand these sort of collaborations because there's very much a cultural element to it. But I've had a lot of American, Canadian friends, etc., kind of going, yes, we grew up on this. This is very exciting. To which I say, hurrah, delighted for you. I quite like Profusion in that they're very, very good quality for the price point and they're quite a bit in this. There's the Trick or Treat eyeshadow palette, it's $18. The Pumpkin Blend sponge set, and it has like this cute little sponge holder for $12. There's the Handheld Mirror and Keychain for $9. A Candy Rush Candy Scented Lip Oil. Mmm, interesting. For $9. I was also told about the Apple Bobbing Overnight Lip Mask. Apparently it's scented, but it doesn't taste of anything, and it's meant to be fantastic, and has like a little spoon, apparently. That's what I was told, and that's $9. There's the Witchy Blend Four Piece Eye and Face Brush set for $15. The Spooktacular Glow Holographic eyelasher for $8, the Magical Wizard Chrome Liquid Topper set for $12, the Magic Mummy Illuminating Face Primer and Setting Spray for $15, and there's a cosmetic bag and gem set, which is this cute little Count Snoopy thing. This is only available in Walgreens, which I think is quite sad. And also, if I was getting the makeup bag, I don't want the gems with it, I just think it's a little bit silly, but there you go. Let's talk about the eyeshadow palette first. It drives me a little bit nuts that it's 31 pans, like just add in that extra one. However, those three shades that are on the side, like obviously they're bigger and it looks like they're kind of special shades possibly like one is marbled at least and I'm wondering is one of them glitter uh, Profusion does actually very very good glitter shadows so I'm kind of interested in that there's a decent level of depth here I think when I'm looking at the purple some of them are a little bit too close tonally to each other but that's me being very very pernickety and really critiquing now I do appreciate the fact that there's three yellow mattes in there now they're probably one, some of the easier yellows to formulate but at the same 
same time, that kind of paler yellow is very, very interesting to me. I like that this is a sort of palette that it could move beyond Halloween as well. Like, yes, there's obviously elements of this that are very Halloween-y, but I think it's very, very pretty. Like, it's not bad at all. And I mean, the price point is good. It'll probably get to like TK Maxx at some point, in which case, yeah, I probably would end up at least thinking about it because their, their quality is pretty darn good. The little handheld bearer, I mean, that that's quite cute. We've seen so many brands doing those recently. Obviously, Glamlight are the best known at this point for coming out with some cute mirrors. But I'm gonna say it, I think this is kind of better. It's cheaper. It does look like it's a good size because a lot of those mirrors now have been like dinky little things. And I'm like, how am I meant to use those? Like, what? how am I meant to see things? It's it's a little bit strange. The holographic highlighter, it looks very gray toned, but again, it might just be the way that they have it set up there. I am reserving judgment on that. I want to see that. I want to see some swatches on it because it's not available on their website yet. I'm very much just going on stuff that I found on Trend Mood, etc. We'll see more as we go along. I don't know if anyone wants an update. Do you want an update? I don't know. I'm intrigued, right? Because they did their Jurassic Park collection. Mm, God, I want to say it was like a year and a half ago, something like that. And they definitely did some really, really interesting holographic things there. And they were very good quality from what I saw from people. So I have to say, I think that's quite good. Then the liquid toppers, they're $12. So it works out as being like $4 per shade. They're very, very safe shades. They're very wearable shades. And I think that's very, very smart but they're also very like autumnal as well. I like a lot of their liquid shadows. They do a lot of like glittery shadows and they're really, really good for the price in my opinion. I, I think this is actually very, very pretty. The face brush set, I'm kind of like, eh, it's fine. I don't really have any brushes from Profusion. I just have like others that I prefer. The one that I would probably like the most is like that angled brush, but that's like at an absolute push. The little sponges look adorable. The fact that there's like little prints on them and then there's the little cup holder to stand it in. I think that's really, really cute. Like I said before, that bag, oh my God, it's adorable. The fact that it has like the little wings on it my stupid little heart is not capable of dealing with it. Like it looks like it's good quality as well. My only concern about this is the material there, it's not gonna wear very well. I think if they'd done this out of like a general fabric, it would probably wear a little bit better. Like this is probably going to wear over time and you're gonna get those like sort of creases in it where it's kind of worn down a bit. And that just kind of makes me a little bit sad. Like I could see it potentially not quite falling apart, but almost, but it seems apparently quite a few of these comes with like enamel pins <laughs> which oh my god I'm of the generation that we spent a whole bunch of our time just buying pins I know and like sticking them to our denim jackets and our bags and stuff to be like I'm cool and I'm interested in things so I kind of love that I love that there's like little pins I want to I want to pin things to myself that sounds really bad but I don't think this is bad. The price point is really good. Profusion is damn good in terms of their quality. So I don't have anything negative to say about that. Can I be honest? I was kind of surprised to see Morphe coming out with something so soon after the closure of their UK stores. They're very much like, let's just distract and do something else. And I'm like, okay guys, we still remember what you did, but there you go. This is their Mixed Signals Dual Ended Cream and Liquid Shadow Sticks. There's seven shades, they're 17 euro each. So there's the shades BFF, FWB, and it has this coral yellow gold and a teal triochrome mixed with a bronze shimmer. Then there's Forever and Fling. That's a gunmetal silver chrome mixed with a matte black. There's Partner Player, which is a champagne gold pistachio and a silver triochrome. And that's mixed along with a toasted champagne shimmer. There's Lover and Fighter, a baby pink and silver duochrome, rose gold and shimmer, Committed and Conflicted, which is an electric purple, emerald and gold triochrome, along with a matte plum, which makes sense because obviously that's a deeper based sort of triochrome. So you need to have a deeper cream to go with. It. They have self-aware and don't care copper chrome and a matte chocolate brown. I feel like that's a safer color. Into it and over it, I think is very, very interesting. This is an icy blue and opalescent lilac duochrome and it's a matte white. And there's finally flirtatious and faithful, which is a sky blue frosted mint and light orchid triochrome mixed with a matte navy. I'm going to talk about their terrible, terrible swatches. They make my brain hurt. We do not need computer generated swatches anymore. Not that we ever needed them, but we definitely don't need them now. Like these are just so silly. I would appreciate the fact that they're 
kind of saying like, here's the cream shadow, here's the cream shadow with the liquid shadow on top and here's the liquid shadow by itself. I would appreciate that if I knew that these were legit. But Morphe have had like a major issue over the years of just computer generating swatches. So it just drives me nuts. So I'm not even putting this in as a frame of reference. I'm just putting this in to be like, do not trust this, move along. It's not great. I'm gonna go through each of these shade by shade to tell you what I think. So this is the BFF FWB. I think it looks quite nice on the eye. Now bear in mind, these are 17 euro each. So you are getting two products there. Is this the most innovative kind of thing? Eh, no, not really. I feel like there's stuff that I already have in my collection. Like I could mix cream shadows that I already have along with maybe some nice Moira glitters and pop that on and I'm gonna get a very, very similar effect. So for me, I wouldn't get that particular one. I feel like the shade self-aware and don't care is so incredibly basic that they really didn't need it. Like this doesn't really add anything. I definitely wouldn't pay 17 euro for that. Maybe the Lover Fighter is a little bit interesting, but again, I feel like Moira Cosmetics, etc., have those really cute little gel pots of like glitters and stuff that are much more interesting. So for me, I don't know. And the fact that I can't go in anywhere to like swatch them myself, I have major trust issues. <laughs> with Morphe in terms of their swatches, so I can't really trust it. Yeah, that would put me off straight away. I thought that I wouldn't be wildly interested in Committed and Conflicted because that kind of trichrome shade is something that's been done a million times. But I mean, it looks beautiful, particularly with the matte plum. It really accentuates that. All that being said, I know if I look at my Danessa Myrick stuff, I can get the same sort of effect and I'm like, eh, I've already bought those, might as well use them. Into it and over it, I think are probably the more interesting ones because you don't see many sort of duo chromes that are very light leaning, you normally see them have like a more dark base. So I do think that that's very, very pretty. It looks very ethereal. Yeah, I like that one. I will say the same thing about the flirtatious and faithful. I do think they're very, very pretty. I will say though, and, and I'm not gonna tell you what to do because that's literally none of my business. You do what you want, none of my business. I personally just feel a bit iffy about purchasing from Morphe after what they recently did. They have the opportunity to learn from their mistake and treat their workers better a second time around when they were letting them off and they did the exact same thing again so I'm like lads that's that's weird so I don't personally feel comfortable with giving them my money but that's me I'm not telling you what to do that's me not you I do think the shade partner and player is quite pretty but again there's aspects of this that I feel like if I go through my collection and I go through things like my like glitter gels etc I could get a very very similar sort of an effect from this like go and look at Moira Cosmetics like you're not going to get a dual ended thing, but you get some really nice glitters that you can pop on top. And I've used them before. I think they're fantastic. There's, here's the thing. I feel like if anybody else, if this came out from Moira Cosmetics, for example, I would be very, very interested. I would be all over it. But Morphe gives me pause. I will say to give them credit, I feel like in the last year, the quality of their products has really increased and it has gotten better. So they pro probably are a better quality than they were before. I just don't necessarily personally agree with their ethos and what they've kind of been doing. Again, that's a me issue. I'm not telling you what to do. But I, if I think about it for long enough, I'm going to sit down and look at this and say, if this came from somebody else, if this came from Colourpop, yeah, yeah, I probably would think about getting this. But for me, I also feel like the price point that they've selected, I'm like, Morphe, who do you think you are charging 17 euro? <laughs> like, I guess they have to pay the workers that they eliminated very, very quickly. I mean, I'm just saying. Oh, this next one. I'm very excited about this because this is coming out today as I'm filming. This is Glisten Cosmetics. You guys know I'm an affiliate with them. I have a code, but my friend Daniela also has a code. I'm going to put all that down below in the description box if you are interested. They're adding to their Chroma Gloss line and they have six new shades. The shades are Sirius, Phoenix, Solstice, Opal, Twilight and Pluto and they're 18 euro, 95 each. The codes that I have will give you 20% off just as an FYI. They're launching today. They had Call Me Chim over on Instagram actually showing them. And I'm gonna show you some pictures there. Oh, they are so interesting. So, so interesting. So for a lot of kind of lip glosses like this that are like duochrome multi-chrome, you normally will have to put down like some sort of a base to really kind of get the color to shine through. But she didn't do that in her video. She just put them on the lip. Like you could see her applying them. So you get to see just how much of a base there already is in them, which makes you kind of go, ooh, these are amazing, by the way, if you put them on top of a lipstick. Like I, I have a few of them. My friend Daniela gifted 
gifted me one, I think, and then that just started a whole cascade and I bought a few. <laughs> They're really good. They're really, really good. And I think the price point is actually pretty good. I quite like the shade Phoenix. I like that the shade Opal looks very, very interesting. Now, she did say that Solstice was her favorite and I agree, it looks absolutely stunning on her. I feel like she showcased them so, so beautifully. It just works beautifully with her skin tone. Then there's the shades Pluto and Twilight. Now, I personally feel like they don't quite work with her skin tone, but that's, I mean, that's just par for the course. You're not gonna have everything suit you. But I do feel like that shade Twilight is quite interesting. I do want to look like a corpse. <laughs> Like, I do think they're really, really interesting. I'm also going to show you a video of them kind of showcasing them. And you can really see a lot of, like, the glitter and multi chrome sort of aspects of these. These are, in my opinion, really, really great. But again, take everything I'm saying with a pinch of salt because I am an affiliate. I know, isn't that disgusting? Ugh. So, you know, keep that in mind. I do think they're very, very pretty. Do I think you need all six? No. Because even when Call Me Chim is showing them, there's a few that obviously suit her and then a few that don't. I would say have a little look at them. Pick out your favourites. Don't run off. They may have like a bundle. I don't know. They normally do. If they do have a bundle of the six new ones, maybe don't. Maybe don't. Just get the one or two that you really, really like and kind of go from there. You, you don't need to collect these, all right? You don't need to have every single one of them, right? Because you know you know the drill with lipstick shades and lip gloss shades. Not every single one of them is necessarily going to suit you. Now, I personally feel like that shade Solstice that she had on her. Ha ha ha. Beautiful. Loved that. Yeah, I want these. They'll also come onto Beauty Bay, I would imagine, sometime soon. Also, can I just say, very very quickly not related but somehow slightly related they did come out with their Teletubbies line recently and I did get one thing out of that and it was the Tubby Custard highlighter when I tell you that is a need you need to get it there is no kind of coloured base on it it's, it's very transparent so it leaves no cast it's perfect so if you're getting those also pick up those at the same time. That's all I'm saying. Then we have Spectrum Brushes. They're also known as Spectrum Collection and they have their Pusheen Gamer set. It's basically a six piece makeup brush set for £34.99. There's a zip around makeup bag for £19.99 and there's a three piece puff set for £12.99 or you could get the three of them together for £54.99. They're, by the way, available right now if you are interested in them. I feel like the packaging on this is pretty darn good. People who love Pusheen are going to get Pusheen stuff no matter what because, I mean, that's just the rule, isn't it? Like, that's the law. You love Pusheen, you just get it. It's like, oh, I didn't even really want this, but Pusheen was on it, so I got it. The brushes themselves, they're fine in the sense that the quality of Spectrum brushes are really, really good. I personally like them, but the actual kind of shape of these, I don't feel it's anything special. They're very, like, copy and paste. I've kind of noticed this a lot with their collections of late. I feel like the kind of brushes that they're coming out with aren't very inspired. They're sort of like, here, we just had these left over. Let's put them together. I personally feel like the Trio Puff Set isn't bad in the sense that that's £12.99 and there are lo lots of different shapes. I personally feel like they could have had Pusheen on more of them, you know, like the actual picture of Pusheen on all of them because I'm a weirdo. I love the little makeup bag. I think it's really cute. It makes me think of the Game Boy and uh, <laughs> are you surprised? I love the Game Boy. It was mostly like I would play Pokemon. Again, are we surprised? I think this is really cute. The price point is isn't bad at all. I just personally wouldn't use those brushes. They're not the sort of shapes that I personally find interesting, but that's that's fine. It's not a big issue. And oh my goodness, guys, we're at that time of the year. Recycling is very important when it comes to holiday collections and hourglass really show it. This is their 2024 collection and they've given us some of the first pictures. There's going to be three palettes with that six pan sort of format. I don't even know what to say. At least when they've done it before, it felt like the three palettes that they released would have some level of cohesion. Whereas this, what is going on? One is an evil eye, one is dragons and one is florals and it's just like how are these connected it doesn't make sense that they're doing a dragon at this time of the year like the year the dragon is uh, it's it's done it's it's pretty much finished why are you doing this now it does look like there's at least you know with the with some of the shades that it's a little bit deeper than previously but like hourglass are not making massive shifts in trying to be more inclusive in their stuff i don't know i used to love 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 their complexion stuff and i actually think it's very very good quality but they don't really seem to be very inclusive 
do stuff you think it's extremely expensive for what it is if I was going to get one of them I'd probably get the dragon one because I actually do quite like the packaging on that but this feels so strange like I'm having deja vu to last year but this just feels like there's no coherence to this I can't figure out how the three of these are related to each other at all like there's no real theme to it it's extremely disjointed and I just think when you're a luxury brand and you're asking people like these are normally like crazy amounts of money like 90 euro if you're asking somebody for 90 euro for something like that I think it needs to be very very cohesive and I also still feel like they need to do more build a palette thing now they did that last year I think they should do that again this year but I don't know I just Hourglass is a funny one. It's it's strange to me, but I, I just felt like I was transported back in time and not necessarily in a good way. And now, another one of being transported back in time, but this time it feels a little bit better. This is She Glam, who have done a collaboration with Powerpuff Girls. I want to say this is about the fourth or fifth collaboration from a makeup brand with Powerpuff Girls. The worst was probably Bobbi Brown. That was absolutely terrible. Colorgram wasn't bad. Colourpop did one and Revolution Beauty did one. How many times have I said Revolution? Because they've like done a collaboration with everyone. Anyways, there's quite a bit in this. There's three palettes. Uh, one is Buttercup, which is Toughest Fighter. Bubbles is Joy and Laughter. And Blossoms is The Leader. They're $9.99 each. There's a Tough Love Shimmer Blush in the shade Utonium for $5.49. There's a Shimmer Stick, and they come in the shades Sugar, which is Blossoms one. Spice, which is Buttercups. And Nice, which is Bubbles. And they're $7.99 each. There's the Save the Day Lip Care for $7.49. And there's Lip Glosses in the shades Buttercup, Bubbles, and Blossom, $5.49 each. Or you can get the total collection for $81.49. And I'm going to say it right now, I actually feel of all of the collabs that we have seen of Powerpuff Girls in the last two to three years, I feel like this is actually the best one. Who'd have actually thought it? I mean, she glam, they have their issues, but they're actually, they do the collabs pretty well. Let's talk about the eyeshadow palettes. I want to talk about the packaging because each of the Powerpuff Girls have these little sunglasses on. And I know this is not a big issue and it's not a big deal, but you can remove their sunglasses. <laughs> I want to play with that. I want to remove it, put it on, remove it, put it on. And I want to see, can I swap the glasses across the girls? That's so ridiculous, but I kind of want to do that because I'm a big child. The colour stories of each of them, perfect. Really, really good. I feel like they make an awful lot of sense. I get why they have that pop of yellow in there for Bubbles 1, which does feel a bit disjointed, but at the same time, I get it. You know, it makes sense. Obviously, I'm looking at the green palette <laughs> because I am predictable. Let's actually talk about that green palette. The swatches look okay. I mean, we have to remember we're talking about an extremely affordable palette here, so I mean, it's not exactly going to blow you away. I will say their stuff isn't like made equally. There's some stuff that's absolutely fantastic and then some stuff that's terrible. And some of their eyeshadows do have a lot of fallout, so keep that in mind. But it does look very, very pretty. I quite like Blossoms one. Like there's part of me that kind of wants to use this as like a blushy palette as well, which is kind of silly, but I do want to do it. They've gone very matte heavy with that one, but it does look very, very nice. Again, the Bubbles one, I kind of feel like that pale blue looks a little bit patchy, particularly on deep deeper skin tones but I do appreciate this at least looks legit more film looking at you these are nice and for the price point for those palettes like I said they're $9.99 each they're not gonna break the bank so they're not bad at all the blush then I mean we've seen kind of stuff like this before basically it seems that they're trying to do it so that you can mix them and I'm like how would that how, how would that happen how would I work with this like the packaging perfection but it's like essentially shades within a shade and I'm gonna say this right now oh lordy maybe it's just because I'm disgusting but the way that I'm looking at this makes it look like it's a vagina because they've like increased the colours and so it just I'm sorry that's just where I am with my life maybe that's what they wanted I don't know but they're obviously trying to kind of show that you can get different shades with it which is grand but they've just given you one block of what it looks like and let's be real on the deeper skin tone a she a she and again this is a franchise that's beloved by many many people so why not have like a deeper darker one why not why not be a bit more inclusive it can't be that different difficult. I don't love that aspect of it. It's those shimmer sticks. I think this is very, very smart. They're kind of saying that these are highlighters, but obviously you could use those on the eyes as well. And just off of Dose of Colours one, I'm not saying this is a dupe at all. Please don't misunderstand me. But off of the Dose of Colours kind of shimmer stick being so popular, mine is coming very, very soon. I'm very excited about it. And the KVD Dazzle sticks. I think this is actually very, very smart. And they look really, really pretty. Like, yeah, they're meant to be like highlights, but you could put them onto the, the eyes as well I, I think they're actually very very
very nice as well. Now they do say it hydrates with 75% water, which almost makes me think a little bit of the Dose of Colors one, because that's meant to be like hydrating as well. I am for sure intrigued. They also have that lip care mask. They have the three kind of colors in there, obviously to kind of represent each of the girls. It's meant to give you lasting moisture. It's a two in one. I mean, yeah, it's fine. It's not wildly expensive. It's grand. The little lip glosses. Oh my God, with the little keychain. Shut up. So, so cute. I actually really like those and they look very, very pretty on the lips. They're not wildly expensive. The Blossom one obviously is more pink toned leaning. It has quite kind of like a little bit of like a shimmery, glittery thing in it. The Buttercup one, I quite like that. That would be very good if you have very pink lips and you want to neutralize it. And then of course, Bubbles one is more blue toned. They're very, very pretty. I feel, like I said, this is one of the better Powerpuff Girls collabs that we've actually seen in the last several years. Is it as inclusive as it could be? Not entirely. I think the one thing is that blush and they could have changed that up, added in an extra one, and then we'd have been all good. But I actually think this isn't bad at all. The price point is great. Now, obviously not everyone likes to buy from She Glam, etc. That's totally fine. Grant, let's just put that bit aside. But I feel like the packaging, really, really good, really links in with the IP. The quality in general that I've tried from She Glam tends to be pretty good. I actually quite like it. I don't really have anything negative to say about it. And I feel like, particularly if you like this, you'd probably be best to go off with the collection bundle because that's gonna give you the best price essentially for all of it. Yeah, it's quite cute. Now we haven't heard from Hindash in quite some time and actually it seemed like a few of his products have been removed from things like Cult Beauty, etc. So there were questions as to what was going on with the brand, but it does look like he has some new products coming out soon. And actually, as you're watching this, this will be available because it's coming out on the 1st of September. I know, I can't believe we're into September. I am until I'm filming, but it is as you're watching. There you go. This is the gradient highlighter. Now I'm quite interested in this because it says it's a hybrid gel powder highlighter formula that mimics pure light on the skin. Now I don't know how much it's going to be. His stuff tends to be very expensive, but also I've heard a lot of good things about his products. So I'm kind of interested. There's three shades and you can use them on the face, the eyes and the body, and you can layer them up for maximum shimmer apparently. So there's Peak Heat, which is a multi-dimensional neutral bronze base with a complex shimmer of deeper pearls. The subtle bronze gradient acts as a wash of satin shimmer bronze to fill on sunbeamed highlight, creating a sun-drenched sizzle. Then there's La Luna, a multi-dimensional moon pearl in a transparent base that features a complex shimmer of light pearls. The subtle lilac gradient acts as a brightening effect on the skin, creating the most angelic of auras. I love, love the sound of that one. Like that one's very, very interesting to me. And then the very last one is Doll Dynasty, which is a multi-dimensional champagne base. That's gonna be, I think, like the most universally flattering one. With a complex shimmer of varying pearls, the subtle pink gradient acts as a kiss of pink that melts the pearls into the skin, creating the dreamiest of complexions. I'm interested in this. I, I can't wait to see what it looks like. As I'm filming this, I only have like some kind of blurry pictures so if I've managed to find better who knows because I have to edit this pretty darn quickly which is why I'm speaking so fast that's right your tv or whatever it is your viewing device isn't actually talking that fast it's just me on a lot of caffeine I like the look of this it's going to depend as to how much it is though because his stuff is very very pricey so Oh, I don't know. Oh my goodness though. I was talking to Jamie, who is makeup on your radar, and I literally just messaged her the other day, kind of going, right, that's it. I'm not buying any more things. I'm fine. I need to leave it because I have other things planned, blah, blah, blah. And then she sends me this and I just went, ah, oh, fuck's sake, this always happens. As soon as I make a broad sweeping declaration, this sort of thing happens. This is the new Lightwork 6, I know, by Danessa Myricks. And I assume it's going to be limited edition. She normally has these limited edition, which I really don't like. I think she needs to make these constantly available. Those terrible groundworks ones are constantly available and yet the good stuff like the bloody lightworks isn't constantly available and I feel very strongly about this and I feel like we should start a petition. But this is $128. It's coming out September 7th. I know I can actually feel, I can feel myself weeping. There's 18 shades, there's nine finishes and they're in three curated colour stories that can be used all over the eyes, face and lips. That's what Danessa is known for. It's like coming out with a multi-use versatile product. So the packaging is apparently special. It's a magnificent magnetic stackable palette that can be unpacked and stacked and taken on the go in its leather palette. Oh, I love it. I'm really angry. <laughs> I'm so angry. I have gotten into a little bit of like a collectionist thing with Danessa. I know 
know, it's terrible. And I have all of her light works so far. I don't have light works one and two, they just didn't appeal to me, but I've light works three, four, and five. And do I need this? Do I need this? I know I don't. Like, I know in the inner core of my being, like I'm looking at the swatches and I'm like, yeah, they're fine. But you know, you can you can be without them. They're not that big a deal. But then I see them on the eyes and I'm like, oh, oh, actually, that's quite pretty. And I will just say, her stuff in general, I've always ended up liking $128. Let's break that down. So there's 18 shades. That breaks down at a little bit over $9 per shade, which actually, when you think about it, isn't that bad for those type of formulas. <sighs> I love as well that she's kind of given those pictures of like the shades in the eyes and shown which ones have gone with which. Mix of Rise, Gleaming, Empowered and Free. I love that on the eye. Also, the model is absolutely gorgeous, so she could probably wear a bin bag and just be sheer perfection. I like this. I'm very aware. I don't need it. I know that, but I like it and I feel a lot of feelings on this. And I think where she gets a lot of people and it does bug me is that whole FOMO thing of you have to get it now or you'll never get it. And I personally don't like that. I don't feel like this should be limited edition. Maybe that's just me. Uh, but yeah, I probably will end up getting it. I hate myself for it. But there you go. Speaking of hate, <laughs> oh my God, this is another transport back in the past. Back in 2016, but apparently not. It's actually 2024. This is Too Faced Holiday stuff. So there's the Jewel Crush Blush and Highlighter Face Palette for $39. This is, by the way, limited edition. You know my feelings on when they come out with holiday stuff that's limited edition. It's normally not tested that great, particularly with Too Faced. I feel if it's their continued palettes, they tend to be better kind of quality. So I don't have the best of ideas about this one. And then there's the you're a gem three piece eye makeup set. It seems that the three piece eye makeup set comes with one of those palettes along with like two mascaras. So you can choose whether you want the purple one or the more gray toned one. Are we surprised if there's a purple toned palette? <laughs> no, we're not, cause it's Too Faced. The face palette, I couldn't find any swatches of, but it's pretty par for the course, like it's grand. Let's talk about the more purple toned palette. Again, it's fine. If you have any, and I mean literally any Too Faced palettes in your collection, I guarantee you have those exact shades you can move on you don't need this unless you're like absolutely married to the idea of this and really want to pick up the mascaras as well which I think personally are a little bit like overhyped then I would say no although I do like their foreplay lash mascara primer I love that but the rest I don't care about the more kind of peachy toned one it looked like it was grey toned in the palette but on the arm it looks more peachy toned fine again it's 2016 we're all transported back to when we did a harsher contour and we didn't know had to blend and by we I mean me I'm not telling you that you did that I'm speaking my truth <laughs> yeah it's so underwhelming I, I I don't get it I don't get it um there has to come a point where Too Faced has to realise that they can't just keep doing the same thing over and over again and expecting us to hand over money they're one of the brands that I definitely don't get stuff for anymore when it comes to Christmas now I used to I used to, I'd pick up like the lip gloss sets and stuff, but definitely not now, because I've noticed, particularly when it comes to their face palettes, their eye palettes, the quality is whew, way down on the floor because they're trying to maximize the, the profit margins. They just seem to be using like inferior materials. That's just my opinion, alleged, etc. all that sort of stuff. But my gorgeous friends, that's it. That's, that's the whole thing. It was a slightly quieter week, but it is what it is. Again, there's going to be no releases and rants next week, but there will be the week after. I do have my favourite comment, and this is from the fabulous Roshi Aurora, who said, this was a lovely start to the morning with a cup of tea and jam on toast. Love it. The breakfast of champions. Teresa, if you do end up getting the I Need a Warm palette, can you please do a comparison video with the Cosmic Brushes Nude Trolls? <laughs> I didn't use your comment as a rationale for me to get the I Need a Warm. I absolutely did. I did. I ordered it and it's coming soon. So yes, that will come at some point. I will do a video comparing the two of them simply because you requested it. That's all it takes. <laughs> That's how poor my willpower is. But my gorgeous friends, that is it. That is the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. Do please like, comment and subscribe. Turn on that notification bell and do please share because sharing is caring, except of course for STDs, in which case, just wrap it up. Don't be gross. But that's it. That's the end of the video and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.